fantastic. So thank you everybody for taking the time, especially out of a busy Wednesday, to come to our uh, event today. So um, before I start, um, I wanted to ask people, first, who's heard of Airbnb before? Pretty much everybody, everybody has heard a little bit about Airbnb. <coughs> and um, so I don't want to go um, way too much detail because most of you guys already kind of know what it is. So I'm just going to give you a couple of helpful hints that I personally have discovered and uh, learned from to make sure that uh, you guys can at least get started on uh, Airbnb. So uh, kind of the topics we're going to cover today is first and foremost, what is Airbnb, which most of you guys already know what it is. Secondly, how to get started. And third and most important, tips for a successful hosting. There's definitely a lot of ways to do it, but um, you want to make sure that if you're going to do it, do it right and make it a business, not just a hobby or something you just do once in a while. So. Uh, a little bit about myself, um, Bay has kind of introduced myself already. Uh, my name is Jing. I am a real estate license broker and I've been renting out properties since 2009. So I've actually been doing this for about 10 years now. And uh, I got my real estate license and mortgage loan license back in 2012. And i um, been hosting on Airbnb since 2016. So I have some experience that I want to share with everybody to um, get, get the most out of uh, everyone's experience learning about Airbnb. So um, if you don't mind, let me sit down. So kind of um, in a brief example of what is Airbnb, um, it was founded in 2008 as a platform connecting travelers and hosts. So think of it as like a marketplace where there's travelers and there's hosts. And what it allows people to do is rent um, their properties um, and travelers could select these properties and stay for a uh, duration of time and more importantly, the reason why Airbnb is um, so popular is that there's currently over 4 million listings around the world, over 190 countries. And you also have complete control as a host. Um, that's kind of what I like about Airbnb is that there's a lot of things you have control over. And more importantly, you, you also have a lot of um, things that you could do to increase the uh, value of your place that you're renting out. So um, kind of how it works, pretty simple. Um, you, get to, you get to decide what you're renting, when you're renting, as well as how much you, uh, you, you could charge for. So you could charge different prices for weekdays, weekends. And um, guests can see your listing and select to book for a, a certain duration of time. So you, they could stay for as little as a day, two days. I currently have somebody staying for 39 nights that's working at a Hitachi and he needed a place to stay for over a month. And he said, well, your place looks perfect for me and my coworker. I'll stay at your place. And um, you can rent out just an entire place or just a room, or you could do a mix and match. And last but not least, um, you could think of yourself as hosting a hotel. So you are the hotel and you have people coming in and booking. So let me show you a um, kind of like an example of what it looks like here. So this is a uh, currently uh, my place that I'm on Airbnb out right now. So you can see, um, have a description, kind of a kind of what the place is. It's two bedrooms, two bath, and um, kind of some instructions for the guest, and a brief description of what the um, property is. So for example, this one is a two bedroom, two bath, single family house with nice front yard, uh, close to. Levi Stadiums, downtown Sunnyvale, as well as um, a lot of the high-tech companies. So you could just put some things like, for example, this is uh, close to the Sunnyvale Apple campus, downtown Sunnyvale, downtown, as well as the uh, LinkedIn headquarters and Google headquarters. And there's um, a couple more things. That you, so this is all basically you can write whatever you want. And right here it talks about some uh, amenities. So it talks. Like for example, there's air conditioning, dryer, washer, TV, all the essential things, and uh, free parking space, and some other things as well here. And this this kind of gives you like an uh, idea of what the space looks like. So there's one room has a queen bed, and another one has a double bed, along with a counter. This is all up to you. Um, the reason why mine is booked all the way and uh, because there's somebody that's staying 
until end of March right now. And uh, also have some sp availabilities. I have a couple spots booked in April and there's some um, availabilities in April. And then uh, reviews. I'll talk about this a little bit more because this is probably the most important thing about uh, being a host is making sure you get good reviews. So um, yeah, it kind of gives a description of where the uh, property is located. And then uh, also you could write in rules. Like for example, I don't, I my, this place, uh, I didn't want pets or uh, children and um, making sure that they take their shoes off and uh, park on the street and uh, also make sure they knew that there is a, a ring doorbell on the main entrance. And uh, so also down here, it talks about like similar um, things, like similar other listings as well. So it kind of gives the, the host. And right here are some pictures. And um, we can talk about a little bit more about pictures later, but pictures is very important. You want to make sure you take good pictures of your um, property. And um, you can see right here is kind of goes into description of like has like a little kitchen, kitchen, a hallway, utensils, also um, dining table, one of the bedrooms with a queen bed, and another bed right here, a bathroom, shower, one with the uh, bathtub, washer and dryer, and I like to I include this so that way they kind of have an idea of the layout of the um, the house. So, kind of have a listen. Did, did anyone have any uh, questions about anything so far, or? Let's go. I'm gonna go back to the, uh, go back to this here. Um, so, present. So, um, now, why Airbnb? Um, who here has uh, done traditional rental, like they have rented out a place? And um, one of the things that um, with traditional rentals that I found out is that uh, you, as great as it is, uh, definitely steady flow of income. I found out that by uh, doing Airbnb, it's significantly higher because you could charge by the day, and um, you, you net to up to about fifty percent more in terms of the net rent after all, all expenses compared to just traditional rental to break it down by the day, and. Um, there's right now, especially in the Bay Area, there's a shortage of places to stay. There's always business travelers, they need a place to stay, and there's not enough hotel rooms for that. And um, <clears throat> not sure if you had the chance to take a look around what the hotel charges around here are. It's pretty high, right? It's like $200 at least, and, and more, more so than not, it's always filled. So you always, there's no place, place to stay. And then um, a lot of travelers, I found, um, they're, they're all here for a business and they just need a place to stay for, for the night that they could pay less than a hotel. As well, some of them actually do prefer to cook. Like my current uh, guests, they specifically requested, we want to have these pots, we want to have these knives, we want to make sure that we have certain things that they could cook. Because think about this, if you stay at a place for 39 nights, you're not going to probably eat out every single night, right? That could get pretty expensive. So you want to have a way to save some money and have a place to cook. And then more importantly, you also have a platform that advertises for you around the world. So there's 4 million listings, you have people all over the world that could look at your place. Versus a lot of times, if you're just renting out like normal rentals, it's just you know the local market. So you have like a pool to a wider range of audience that could stay at your, at your place. And to kind of get started on Airbnb, um, this is where I want to spend some time with because um, a lot of people think, oh, it's very easy, you just post you, you know, your stuff online, take some pictures, that's it. There's actually a couple of things I found out that you want to be aware of before you get started. The first one is check your c local city about short-term <coughs> rental regulations. A lot of places now have made requirements for short-term rental. For example, in uh, Sunnyvale, you need to register with the city to get a permit, a short-term rent rental permit that costs about $80 or so. So you wanna make sure you get that permit and that way you actually register with the city as compliant. And the reason why they do this is because there is a short-term rental occupancy tax of 12% that 
that needs to be collected. Thankfully, Airbnb does that for you on your behalf. They collect it from the guest, and if it's shorter than 30 days, it automatically does a calculation for you in Sunnyvale. Do you need a business license? Um, you don't need a business license, but definitely if you do have one, that's great, but the short-term rental occupancy is a permit, essentially. Okay, so it's saying, enough. yeah, okay. so basically just register this property, it's gonna be used for short-term rental, mm -hmm. and agree to the uh, agreements. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the first one. The second one is make sure you get homeowner's um, insurance. So I wish I put, should put uh, insurance, but um, insurance is very, very important. And here's the reason why. The normal insurance that you get from your insurance company for fire, it doesn't cover business activities. Mm -hmm. Business activities is what Airbnb is legally defined at. So you wanna make sure you check with your insurance. Can you do Airbnb with your current homeowner insurance? And if not, make sure you get the proper coverage. I'll. I'll talk about that a little bit more in detail, but I found out through my old insurance, they would not cover it. They're like, nope, sorry, we can't do that. Or they could say, um, you know, there's a limitation of how many people can rent out. So make sure you get the proper coverage for your um, Airbnb. So do you mean not every insurance company will cover it? Exactly. So you call them, you tell them, I, I want to do Airbnb. Airbnb. And they're going to ask you, okay, are, do you live in the property? Sometimes if you live in the property, they won't cover that either. So some companies will cover it, but you can't live in the property. So you have like a separate rental that you do Airbnb. Some companies said, okay, we could do that. But other ones could say, no, we don't cover Airbnb if you live in the property. So, so sometimes it's, it's kind of depends on what you, you're looking to do, but make sure you find the right insurance and ask your insurance company, do you cover Airbnb? I'm do, looking to do Airbnb at this property. And also decide how often do you want to host and how long do you want to stay for. Some people just want to rent out just a room and they want to do it part-time. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So you want, some people want to do it just part-time. Just like, okay, maybe once a, a, on the weekends. Other people want to do, okay, I want to do it as often as possible. So you, you need to decide that. And lastly, the thing you want to do is you want to make sure you get at least these basic amenities, bare minimum for your guests. So think of it, when you go to a hotel, for example, or a motel, there are certain things you expect, right? Like, for example, make sure your bed is clean with clean pillows and blankets. You wanna have bath house, toilet paper, shampoo, tables, chairs, cooking utensils and plates. Most people will at least wanna cook, so at least have some kind of basic plates and um, utensils for them. Also, if you can, get a mini fridge or even better, a full refrigerator, depending on what you need. Um, a coffee maker is nice. A coffee maker would help for if they do coffee or if not, at least some kind of hot water um, maker. TV and high-speed uh, Wi-Fi, and lastly, washer and dryer. Those are at least the basic things. You can obviously add more things, but that should be enough for you to at least get started where the guests can at least have a comfortable night and be able to give you a good review afterwards. <laughs> Any questions on this or think things go over? Um, yeah, I have, a, I have a question. Sure. I've, I've heard about uh, in some New York City, mm, yeah. if, if do Airbnb, the, the owner must live in the Property? Is that right? Yeah, Sunnyvale is a little bit strict. Sunnyvale, you do have to live in the, the property. So you could, um, but other cities, check with your local local city if it allows you to do uh, separate. Like I think Santa Clara allows you to do like separate. You don't have to live in there. But um, Sunnyvale, yes, you do have to li live in. Where to check? To City Hall? City Hall. Um, just call uh, housing. Housing. Housing mm -hmm. usually is a good one. Or just, just ask, the, like when you call the city, ask them, hey, I want to do Airbnb. Who should I be speaking to about potential uh, regulations or things that I need to uh, know about? So definitely check with your city. Uh, does it have to be single family homes or? Um, it, it could be condos <coughs> or, uh, but, but again, check with your local local city. Mm -hmm. But um, condos usually do work, but uh, it, your HOA, depending on um, certain things. Check with HOA. It, HOA, yeah, check with HOA. Mm -hmm. So that's also, also another thing. It's like, when in doubt, check. The last thing you want is have neighbors complaining about, oh, there's too many people going in and out, 
and then they find out 